Today on Bike People, we visit the High Trestle Trail and the people and places around it. We learn all about recumbent bikes, and the crew goes on strike. All that and more, straight ahead on Bike People. Bike People is brought to you in part by the Des Moines Bicycle Collective promotes bicycling as a means of active transportation, wellness, and recreation in central Iowa. The Iowa Natural Heritage Foundation, working to protect and restore Iowa's land, water, and wildlife. Bike Iowa, your source for Iowa bicycle rides, events, and news, connecting cycling with Iowa community since 2001. My name is Forrest. I got my first bike at age three, my next bike at age seven. I've ridden in Europe, Australia, and all across our great nation. My name is Suzette. I'm a mom, TV personality, I have no and bike lover. I've known Forrest for years <laughs> from interviews, rides, and bike events. Things up for rag riding. I'm in the bicycle business and a cycling enthusiast. I've been collecting, fixing, and selling bikes my whole life. We love bikes and all the people, stories, and adventures around them. <laughs> We're on a journey to show you the world through two wheels. To help you become Bike, bike People. Hey, all you cyclists out there. Thanks for tuning in to Bike People. I'm so excited because, once again, we are going on an adventure on two wheels. We are. I've got some fantastic video here. A buddy of mine, Mark, who's from Orlando, Florida, national sales manager for a company called Cat Trike, who they make recumbent trikes. He came up, we went to the High Trestle Bridge, beautiful day, great scenery. Gotta show you some video. You're gonna enjoy it. All right, let's check it out. Pancakes. They were Stop so, for pancakes, oh, didn't you? Oh, they were so good. The Lions Club had $5 pancakes. I'm so sorry you missed out. They were wonderful pancakes. Well, you can buy me pancakes someday soon. I'll make a trade. Rhubarb pie, and I'll buy you pancakes. See ya. Saw a lot of great bikers on the trail, and the trail was so beautiful and smooth that day. Oh, you're, those bikes really do move. I mean, it's like you're going as fast as any of the other bikers on um, regular two-wheel bikes. Cat trikes cruise very nicely, and uh, just such a such a smooth ride with that comfortable saddle. And the bridge was beautiful, perfect blue sky. Got wow. to see a great shot of the river there. It was a beautiful ride. Oh, I think you're pulling in the flat tire. Yes, you are. Well, One of my we, favorite stops we had on, to, on the trail. We had to talk to a lot of other cyclists there and just had a wonderful time uh, enjoying the trail, enjoying the rides together. It was a wonderful day. Always, you always run into someone you know. We do, and the Tiger Bowl, we've got to That is a gem. We've got to come here. They've got eight lanes, and we've got to bring the crew up here. I'm going to tell you, we're going to have some fun. we got to take this place over and really rock that bowling alley. Well, hey, that looks like a lot of fun. I noticed that you stopped for pancakes, and you know how I love stopping for pancakes before you head out on the ride, and the recumbent bike looked so comfortable. I just don't know anything about recumbents. I mean, I'm not even sure if someone like me could just hop on and ride. I can tell you, if you can sit in your favorite easy chair at night and smile, you can ride a recumbent trike. It's that easy. The learning curve is about that long. All you have to do is be able to sit down in it, have fun, pedal, smile. Sure. And how do you choose one? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. Since you want to learn about recumbents, I've got a little job for you. I'll teach you about recumbents if you'll do me a favor. All right. What I'd like you to do is hop in your car, take the film crew. I'd like you to go up to the trail, find all the fantastic attractions around there. Then our viewers will have a great trip to go take. And uh, I'll teach you about recumbents. That sounds awesome. Well, I know a lot about the Iowa trails. The small towns around them are so welcoming. There's always something cool to see and to do. The history is amazing. And of course, there's always something delicious to eat and drink. That'll be my favorite part. Rhubarb pie is what I'm hoping for. I bet I could find you some rhubarb pie. And I am thinking of a place that has just the right ice cream for it. Ooh, rhubarb pie and ice cream. It doesn't get any better than that. It's going to be a hit for us. Fantastic. It's a deal then. All right. Nice day. I'm 
headed up to the Woodward Madrid area and I'm so excited. Now, I know where I'm going, but if you're unsure of where to go, I wanna give you a few tips on finding out the best trails and how to get there. So first, stop at your local bike shop because they have great maps, they have tips, and of course, they're experts and they've ridden all these trails and can tell you about some of the local landmarks. Next, you wanna get on your computer and hop on Google Maps. So let's just click on that here. And I'm going to just type in where I wanna go, Madrid, Iowa, simple, and there's a map. Now, we need to know where the bike trails are. So you'll take your cursor and just move it over on top of the satellite box here to the right, and then scroll down until you see bicycling. Click it, and the bike trails show up. What's even more exciting is if you scroll out, you can see the bike trails statewide, and if you scroll out even further, nationwide too. It's amazing. Now, if you're like me, you're gonna want more information than just where the trail is. So let's check out Iowa Natural Heritage Foundation because their website not only shows you where the trails are, you can click on the little dot that says the trailhead and it brings up the, all the information that you'll ever want to know about the trail and local landmarks. And lastly, you'll wanna check out the Chamber of Commerce in each town to find out about all the cool things that are happening in the area. I'm out of here. Well, listen, I knew you wanted to learn about Recumbent, so I had the guys set up a few of those here. Yay! So, how long have they been making these? You know, they've been making Recumbents in England as uh, early as 1905. We even had a manufacturer right here in Iowa in the 80s. Wow, you're just full of information. I am full of lots of stuff. Yes, you are. Tell you. How about we hop off and take a look at the rest of the bike? Let's do it. All right. What do we have here, Forrest? Well, we talked about the Lanier company that was in Iowa in the yeah. 1980s, and they had a recumbent bike with below seat steering. Okay. These two units are above seat steering. Cool. All right. Well, there is a, I can tell the difference right now, other than color, that this one seems like it's a little bit shorter and that one's longer. What makes the difference there? This is what we call a short wheelbase recumbent. This is a long wheelbase recumbent. And the difference, think about it in automobile terms. Okay. If you were in the most smooth riding luxury mm. car. That's what that long wheelbase is for. It smooths the ride out, gives you a nice stable ride and a very comfortable smooth ride. This is a little bit more of a sports car. It's gonna be a little quicker, a little bit more responsive in the way it handles and steers. So it's gonna be like a little two-seater sports car. This should be the red one. This should be the, like Ferrari red. <laughs> right, I right. agree, I agree. <laughs> Why are people riding the recumbent? For comfort. If you've mm -hmm. ever ridden a regular bike, maybe on a, a long ride or early in the year before you're in shape, yes. your rear end hurts, your back might hurt a little, your neck hurts, mm -hmm. your hands or wrists might yep, hurt. Definitely my right one. This takes just a lot of the pressure away okay. from uh, riding on, on a regular bicycle. We've seen the two wheel. We've already rode on the side by side. And yes. now let's take a look at the three wheel or the trike, right? The trike. Let's right. go look let's at it. Let's check it out. Forrest, let me tell you, I could get used to this. This is so comfortable. I can imagine anyone could sit down and ride this bike. The learning curve is really short on the uh, trike. It really is. All you have to be able to do is get down on it, put your feet on the pedals, yeah. and you can take off. It's that simplistic. How would you compare the maintenance of this to uh, a regular upright um, road bike? A lot of these parts are actually the same as on your road bike, for instance. Uh, the things that are unique, it has a very long chain. Mm -hmm. It's about two and a half times longer than a traditional bicycle chain. So there's a little bit of maintenance there, not unlike your single bike, but there's just more of it to maintain. Uh, and that's what your bike shop is for. Take it there every year and have it tuned up appropriately. But otherwise, most of the components are the same as on your single bike, so there's not a lot of extra maintenance. I love riding all the trails in Iowa, so that would mean I'd need to transport this. What's the best way to get it there? A couple of different ways. They actually uh, make specific bike racks for your automobile to carry a trike. Uh, people have SUVs and slide them in the back, pickup trucks, put them in the back. We actually have trailers that you can buy put the trike on the trailer and haul it right to the uh, trailhead. I think we should take this for a spin, my friend. Let's go. Let's roll. I am so excited to show you this. I know you don't have a lot of time, so I've kept it short. This is just a flavor of what we've done so far. Are you ready? Oh, you bet, let's show it. Hey, good morning. Good morning. I'm Suzette. I'm Joe McNally. Right. Well, I'm excited for this tour today. I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing all the plants, especially the prairie. Are you ready to get started? Yeah, absolutely. Let's, Let's go. Joe, it seems like we're out in the middle of nowhere, but we have a paradise here. 
the, oh, we're at the Iowa Arboretum. Very cool. What's your um, job here? I'm the horticulture project manager here at the Iowa Arboretum. So how did this all evolve? Well, uh, back in uh, the mid-60s, there were a group of local uh, people in a horticulture club uh, that decided to get together and uh, start an arboretum and purchased uh, the original 40 acres that we're standing on. Uh, from there, it has expanded into uh, what you see now. In addition to this 40 acres, we have a, another uh, 338 total acres. Uh, in addition to this, with prairie lands across the street. We're at the prairie now, probably one of my favorite landscapes. Yeah. I would I would love to have my entire yard look like this. I don't know if my neighbors would like that, but yeah. it's so important to have more of this in Iowa, and why not start in my yard, right? As you know, we're bike people, so we like to, you know, to take a trailer and bring our stuff with us, yeah. and we're just, a, you know, a few miles off of the trail. Can we bring picnics out here? Because I can imagine myself sitting here yeah. and having lunch. Absolutely. A lot of people make a whole day of the Arboretum. Wow. Well, thank you for your work. This yeah. is unbelievable. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, Earl, for having me into the museum today. Let's have a little tour. We're really interested in uh, the, tra the railway and the trestle bridge and how that all evolved. Also, the connecting train from Des Moines went up twice a day for the east and west traffic from uh, the Hiawatha to Des Moines. Just transportation for passengers to and from? Passengers oh, only. wow. Okay. They, they had freights through here, but we're just showing passengers mm -hmm. here. Well, this looks like the trestle bridge right here. That's the uh, 1912 uh, bridge. It's supposed to be the longest in the world at the time. Mm -hmm. And you can see from the nice, clean pedestals of the bridge mm -hmm. that it was quite an early picture. Because wow. later growth of all kinds grew sure. up around the uh, base. Caramel, vanilla, cream. So I imagine you probably have several uh, Viking stories out in the coming out here. Yes, there are some Viking stories out there to be had. And uh, one in particular involves a family from Wisconsin. And they had been on the bike trail. They started in Woodward and rode almost to Slater and then back to Woodward and then down to our farm, all on their bicycles. And they got here and they wanted to purchase quite a few things. And I said, that's no problem. We can get a cooler for you and get this packed. And she said, but I'll tell you what, she goes, I don't think we can make it back up here. Oh, up here. No. She goes, I would pay you if your husband oh, would put, put our bicycles in the back of his pickup and give us a ride back into Woodward. Oh. And I said, that would be no problem at all. Oh, wow. So we loaded their bikes up and took them back up to Woodward. And the next day was a sample Sunday. And by golly, they came out. Wow. And they filled a great big cooler up with all sorts of neat stuff to take oh, back home. Oh my goodness. So that was nice. That is fantastic. And you know, she was just, so happy. That's just the way it is in Iowa. I, you know, I really believe that people are genuine and want to help. And you no know, problem. <laughs> yes, if they need a ride back, it's, it's no problem. Usually there's someone around. Hey, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Morris is going to be so jealous. Homemade vanilla ice cream and his favorite, Grandma made, if I can get into it, his favorite, Grandma made rhubarb pie. So good. Yum. Morris, you are missing out was the most amazing pie. I don't know, I, I think the ice cream might even be my favorite part. So good. Hey Mark, thanks for coming down to Waterworks Park to show us about your bikes. Exciting day, glad to be here. Well, you make such an awesome bike. You can see by the crowd, lots of people out here can see what you've made. So tell us what makes your bike so cool. Well, it's a recumbent tricycle, so um, pretty much anybody can ride it. Um, so anybody with any disabilities, it's really good for. Um, but I also do some endurance racing, and it's getting a lot more popular because they're so comfortable, um, very aerodynamic, and lightweight and fast. The founder of the company's name is Paulo Camasmi, and uh, he moved here from Sao Paulo, Brazil. So my name is Paulo Camasmi. I'm a Brazilian mechanical engineer, and, and that's uh, my passion. So I was in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I saw this Diamondback bike, a really comfortable bike. And when I look at that, I had this epiphany that I could also make bikes. 
And then I, I call my wife upstairs, Rafaela, and I show her, I said, look at this. She said, what? I said, this, this bike, isn't that beautiful? She said, hey, it's a beautiful bike. What do you have in mind? I said, we are going to move to the United States and I'm going to start a bike company. She said, what are you talking about? Are you crazy? Um, he just loves manufacturing. Um, and so he decided to make this comfort bike and he started doing a bunch of research and found out that recumbent tricycles are really cool, but they're stuck in 1970, they're heavy, they're ugly, they're not appealing, they're not modern. So he said, being a mechanical engineer, I can make a super lightweight, modern, very cool vehicle um, made out of aluminum that you know everybody can enjoy and really appreciate. Well, I can imagine that there are a lot of people out there who are really happy that you've made this. Who are those people who are buying the bikes? What kind of people are, are interested in the trike? It's uh, mostly baby boomers. Um, we had a couple, they were like 65 years old, hadn't been off the couch for years. Their first bike ride, they went 40 miles. Wow, it's nice to talk to you. Thanks right. for coming out. Thank you very much, Suzette. Say, listen, we've got a good buddy of mine, Bob, that's going to be meeting us here today. You want to learn a little bit more about recumbents? Yeah, I did. He's a great recumbent rider, just finished right across the United States on his recumbent, so we wow. can kind of learn a little bit from him, pick his brain. He's coming here. Come in here, just Can't a few wait. minutes. Bob. Hi. Are you ready? Ready. I'm always this ready This is for Suzette. A bike ride. Hi. Bob. Good to see you. Bob just got back from a great ride across the United States on his recumbent yes. bike. And, you know, I want to talk a little bit about recumbents today. And he's going to be a great resource for us Perfect. here. Well, first of all, it's great to meet you. Second, this is the kind of recumbent bike that I am so confused about. It doesn't look easy to ride. It looks comfortable when you're on it. But how in the <laughs> world do you even get started? Well, it's, it's a little bit like an upright bicycle. There's a sense of balance, but it's pretty similar. I put a lot of people on them on a little downhill to get them started, and they learn right off the bat. And did it take you very long? No, not at all. It, it's, uh, everything's, uh, the, the, the type of balance is a little bit different, but the way you feel it is the mm -hmm. same as on an upright bike. It's just, uh, it's so confusing to me because the feet are up here, <laughs> and well, yeah, you know, you're riding it. <laughs> the feet up here and the chain's a lot longer, but other than that, still two wheels, you're still pedaling. Right. Uh, just a steer and shift. A real comfortable seat. So why do you <laughs> ride this type of bike? There did get to be a time when if I was on long rides that uh, it would sometimes bother in my upper back and pinch nerve, you know, maybe be a problem. You know, riding 40 or 50 miles on an upright wasn't a problem, but day after day of more than that would uh, get to me. And uh, so I decided to take a look at recumbent. And I'll be honest with you, after the first time I rode a recumbent on Rye Bra, I said, you know, this is the kind of ride I don't need to be on an upright. I can be laid back the whole ride. So. Nice and casual. <laughs> just enjoy yourself. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's maybe not a racing bike, but then I'm not a racer. I'm just a tourist. <laughs> why did you Comfort's choose, king. Why did you choose the, this one, the higher, I guess the higher up one? You know, there's so that's many a, that are That's lower. a good question because there are a lot of different uh, uh, styles of, of recumbent bikes. Uh, this one is a, is a little more like the upright, which I was used to, uh, is a little faster. Uh, I get some grief from my daughter, at least I did when I first bought this, her being a triathlete, she thinks this is an old man's bike. And I said, well, Christina, you, did you know. you tell her you're an old man? <laughs> I said, <laughs> Come number on, one, I am. <laughs> <laughs> number two, I said, all the land speed records are actually set on recumbents of one style really? or another. And that took her back a little bit, so. Well, anyway, should we go for a bike ride? We should. And Got you know, Bob here, and he's ready to go. That's true. Now, we're on the R Raccoon River Valley Trail, as you have, even have a jersey. I that got says, the jersey It looks like you. you've got a Brian Duffy cartoon right, right. there, too. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Should we roll? Let's roll. Ready let's to roll. Do it. Okay. All right. Let's mm -hmm. go.
to meet you. Hey, good to meet you, Suzette. Good to ride with you, and thanks for all the information about your company. You bet. Anytime. Bob, uh, thanks. Good to see you. you again. Good to see Have you. Have a great day on the trail today. Yeah, I will. Thanks a lot. See you later. Another awesome ride. Cool. Bye bye. Fun time. Yeah. A couple weeks ago, we were riding in the High Trestle Trail and we came across this great place. It's called the Tiger Bowl. That is a gem. We've got to come here. They've got eight lanes and we've got to bring the crew up here. I'm going to tell you, we're going to have some fun. we got to take this place over and really rock that bowling alley. I decided to take the whole crew up there for a night out. Tom, Thomas. So we're going to start out, we're going to go all of the way across the bridge. All the, all the way all across the, way. the bridge. But stop on the bridge if you haven't seen it before. It's a great view. Take a good, good look at it. When we get all the way over to the other side, just as reservations, we're going to own the bowling alley. Woo! We're actually going to own it for the night. And then when it gets dark, we're going to come across see the great bridge with all the lights on and have just a kind of a great completion to a wonderful day. So be careful. Stay away from each other. Make sure your lights are ready to go for the ride back, and let's go have some fun. So thanks for coming, guys, and let's get rolling. Well, I know that I had a great time, um, you know, riding from Woodward um, to the bridge. My boys had not been up there, so it was the first time that they got to see it. So when we came up on the bridge, you can just imagine their excitement. The scenery is spectacular off the bridge. There's so many great spots to stop and take a look at the scenic overviews, get some good pictures, uh, the river in the background, nice blue sky. It's just a gorgeous day. Let's see how good you are at bowling, because I can tell you right now, I used to, you know, do a little bowling in the day. Well, I can't. I don't. I can't beat you. I don't want to show you up. Oh, I'm going to go let ahead. you win. Is what's going to happen. Just go ahead and try. <laughs> we'll just see how that works out. <laughs> yeah, go to a bowling alley. Eat good bowling alley food. He orders a salad. Well, you can see that uh, I let you win. I was unsuccessful at bowling. I don't know if you let me win, but I do know that I uh, took you to the cleaners. How do you do this? I challenged my son Biff just to see how well he could bowl backwards using the cycle mirror. Ready now. Got done. Everyone's got all this great bowling in, all that good food in. Got to get across the bridge while the lights are still on because they shut off at like 12 o'clock midnight. So we got to get there before that. We're going to be leaving pretty quick. So we're going to make sure get your lights on, get everyone out. We'll unlock the bikes, get the blinkies on, get the headlights on, get everyone rolling, be safe. Let's have some fun. Let's finish this night up. Let's have a good time. Thanks for coming, man. This is a lot of fun. Thanks for it. That was great. Let's go. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The view on the bridge in the evening is amazing. The lights are incredible. Uh, there's just no way to explain it without getting up there and seeing it. The, the pictures do it a little bit of justice, but not like being there in person. Okay. It's a great place to go. Well, that was an amazing ride. I can't thank you enough for involving all of us. Oh, I'm glad you came. It's so good. Well, it was a great competition, great game, great bike ride, everything. We had a good time. It was a wonderful time at the, at the High Trestle Bridge, yeah. and uh, we'll do it again. That's right, and I'll challenge you to another game of bowling. Well, I, okay, time. I'd like to win again. Yeah, I enjoy winning. This time I'm not going to let you win. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. So for all of you at home, don't forget to get out there. And become bike people. What? What's, what's the fun? You just, oh, you're <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about it. <laughs> I gotta wipe the tears away now, okay? <laughs> uh, okay. You want to learn that with some advice?
Hi guys, we want you to share with us how you see the world through two wheels. Give us a scoop on your favorite trails, share your ride pictures or videos. Send an email to info at bikepeople.tv with any questions or information you'd like to share with all the other bike people out there. Well, the scoop I'm hoping somebody shares is a scoop of vanilla ice cream on a big piece of pie. We're talking about over the internet, like on Facebook for us. Well, can we at least have a piece of pie, like a picture of a piece of pie on there? Depending on the subject matter, we may even post it on our Facebook page, our website, or maybe even on TV. Now remember, this is a family show, but you know, maybe we could get like recipes for rhubarb pie. In fact, somebody could tell me where I could go out and pick up a piece of rhubarb pie. You are hopeless. Encourageable. Bike People is brought to you in part by the Des Moines Bicycle Collective promotes bicycling as a means of active transportation, wellness, and recreation in central Iowa. The Iowa Natural Heritage Foundation, working to protect and restore Iowa's land, water, and wildlife. Bike Iowa, your source for Iowa bicycle rides, events, and news, connecting cycling with Iowa community since 2001. Thanks for watching Bike People. For more about us, like our Facebook page and check out our website at www.bikepeople.tv and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Bike People TV, all one word for behind the scenes looks.